The AST volts on super trucks heads outside the state of Michigan for the first time in 2021, even if only by 5,000 feet. We're at the Toledo Speedway this week in Toledo, Ohio, and taking the pole position would be Juan Cortez in truck number 95. Cortez, the Midwest Motors racer, had a top five qualifying run last week at Flat Rock, but got flipped upside down halfway through the first lap and had no chance to show what speed he had for the race, getting another chance here today and making the most of it with the first pole position of his career. Cortez leads the field through lap one with Andy Piper, the outside pole sitter settling into second place, and Thomas Lancaster is put himself into the third spot right behind Piper. Lancaster also crashed out of the race very early at Flat Rock, and that was the very first race of his Super Trucks career, so we have really not gotten the chance to see what this young man from New York is capable of, and apparently he's capable of speed, having put that truck in the top five for today's race, but falling back as he has found himself stuck on the outside lane. As he and Danny Vigo begin to drop backwards, that allows Wilson Timothy and Caitlin Holt to move their way into the top five, joining Jason Miller, who also started here up at the front, Miller having trouble keeping his own truck down low though, and shortly thereafter, Timothy is going to move to the inside of Andy Piper and take over the second spot. A lot of speed being shown in the early stages from the 61 truck, as well as from Caitlin Holt, who now tries to make a run of the 13 truck herself. We've got some three wide action further towards the end of the field. Legend Hart finds himself in the middle of Amberly Weiss on the inside, and Brianna Princehorn on his outside, but the two of them make contact in turn three and get all sorts of out of shape and somehow both recollect their trucks. That was an impressive save from the both of them, but uh, neither driver, I would have to imagine, is particularly impressed with the other. These drivers not off to a very strong start, as I'm sure they would have liked. Neither is Robert Embry, Pedro Menares, or Amberly Weiss are running back there with them. Juan Cortez begins to open up a lead and pull away from second place Wilson Timothy. We were not sure after qualifying how much Cortez's qualifying pace would translate into race pace, but it appears that he has a very fast race setup under him as well. Cortez has not enjoyed the success that some of his fellow longtime competitors in the Super Trucks have, but he is proving his worth here today and showing that he is a much improved driver over the Cortez of years past. His big lead, however, is going to be quickly erased by Dale Clow as Clow goes a lap down and appears to be in no hurry to get out of the leader's way. The same applies to Morgan Christian, who also holds up the leader a bit, but fortunately for Cortez, he retains the lead in both instances, and Clow nearly gets wrecked behind him in the background. We saw the double zero truck get turned towards the inside wall. Looks like Andy Piper came flying up on him in turn two, and that was nearly a big crash that involved a lot of the leaders, and Clow pushes up the track and breaks loose in turn three. Pushing up into the door of Danella Jacobson right in front of a big pack of faster cars, and uh, luckily, everybody gets away with this incident as well. It looks like Clow might have finally received the message and is moving aside for the rest of the Elite Lab cars, fortunately for them, and everyone continues on unscathed. After his excellent run in qualifying, Thomas Lancaster has fallen so far down the order that he is now at risk of falling outside of the top 20. Truck number 777 is not performing nearly as well in the race as it was during qualifying, but the trucks just ahead of Lancaster are the ones that are going to get themselves into trouble here, as Dale Cloud trips up a few of them and gets Pedro Menares and himself turned into the outside wall. That crash was uncannily similar to one of the cautions that Cloud caused last week at Flat Rock. The same three drivers were involved in that one in the same formation, and the end result was also Menares getting turned to the outside wall. Menares probably less than pleased that History has so inconveniently repeated itself here, but fortunately for Tiffany Rogers, she gets away clean from this accident as well. Cortez leads over Timothy and Caitlin Holt to the restart, and runs really wide up the turn two banking, and nearly into the outside wall off the corner. He manages to gather it back up though, and retain the lead, although he pushes wide and turns three and four again, opening up the door for Wilson Timothy to go for the lead, but the two leaders take the yellow flag at the last second, and Cortez holds onto the top spot. We have had an accident right on the restart, and guess who? Dale Clow is going to cause this one as well as he pushes up turn three and puts Brian Kelly hard in the outside wall. Matt Jacobs gets a big piece of that as they run into Clow's truck, and truck number double zero is officially done for the day. But not before he inflicted a lot of damage upon trucks number six and 47, who will both continue, but Unfortunately, uh, rather battered and beaten. 
On the restart, Danella Jacobson, who has made her way up into fourth place, hits the outside wall off of turn number two, but luckily for her, Morgan Christian was holding up everyone else around her and protected that fourth spot. Danny Richards Jr., the flat rock runner-up, has worked his way up into the top ten, but he's going to get himself caught in a bad spot between Andy Piper and Jason Miller, and spun to the inside wall on the back straightaway, the car gets tipped upside down and launched into the catch fence at turn number three. After landing on top of the 123 truck of Sarah Morsaw, the red flag has been brought out after a frightening crash. Uh, the worst we've ever seen at this track for sure in this series. On lap 22, as Richards Jr. got his truck tipped over after colliding with the inside wall and, oh my goodness, landed right on top of Sarah Morsaw's truck. The A post on the 123 took a lot of the force of that impact and received a lot of damage, but luckily held up. That was, that was a very vulnerable part of the truck to take that big of an impact. And uh, we're very, very relieved that Sarah Morsaw is unhurt. Danny Richards Jr. was unhurt as well, although he had to wait a little longer to get out of his truck while the track workers got number 70 machine down from the fence that it knocked over. Just down the track, Andy Piper got wiped out in turn three by Jason Miller as Miller tried to save his own truck. And that's gonna get Pedro Menares, Thomas Lancaster, and Matt Jacobs involved in the ensuing crash. Flip Papadopoulos got a small piece of that as well. Sarah Morsaw and Danny Richards Jr. are very obviously out of the race, so are Matt Jacobs and Pedro Menares. But once more, we are very fortunate that nobody was harmed in this accident. With the way that it played out, that was not a guarantee. The race remained under the red flag for an extended period of time but in spite of the expectation from a lot of the drivers in the field that we would not be able to get back going again today, everyone was ordered back into their trucks and to refire the engines. That catch fence in turn number three that Richards Jr. knocked down was absolutely destroyed, and frankly, I have no idea how they managed to repair it properly in such a brief period of time, but we are back underway in either case, as Juan Cortez leads over Wilson Timothy and Caitlin Holt to the restart. But unlike the first run of the day, Cortez can't pull away from the 61 truck, and off at turn number two, Timothy makes a move for the lead of the race. He got on the gas and kept it down low with a uh, lot of drive and a lot of grip on corner exit, and he's going to take over the top spot of the race for the first time today. Drifting wide in turn two though and almost handing that lead right back to Cortez, but manages to hang on and starts to open up a big lead over the 95. Cortez is not safe in second place either as Danella Jacobson and Caitlin Holt team up to put him behind their trucks. As Jacobson moves up into the second spot, having slowly worked her way forward after starting from 13th, going for her second career win, just one race after her maiden victory at Flat Rock. Holt and Jacobson, however, are going to get held up big time by the lap truck of Morgan Christian, who has been caught by the leaders yet again. Cortez gets away cleanly and moves himself back into the runner-up position, as Holt and Jacobson resume their fight with one another, but these three drivers have more company now than just each other, as Robert Embry has caught up to the three of them and is going three wide for third place off of the exit of turn four. Jacobson dove that truck into turn three on the low side, but drifted all the way up to the wall, and Holt pulled the crossover at the same time that the 44 was going down low. Holt is going to win out in this battle and claim third place in the process, and Alex Robbins has joined this fight as well. The Leicester Racing teammate to Andy Piper had a very poor showing last week at Flat Rock, showing little speed and running towards the back and causing a few crashes in the process, but today, after a, another poor qualifying run, he's worked his way up to the front and is fighting for the top five. Looking at Wilson Timothy, there goes a 61 truck in turn number three, and we're waiting for second place Juan Cortez. There he goes, truck number 95, with Jacobson, Holt, and company in tow. Timothy, as you can see, has opened up a very sizable lead over the rest of the field, which makes sense considering how much that second on back has been fighting with each other. Timothy, as well, has been setting lap times that nobody else has been able to match. The fight goes on for third, as Danella Jacobson and Caitlin Holt continue to battle fiercely with one another, but Jacobson goes all the way into the wall and turns three and four, and loses a ton of speed in the process, giving the fourth place to Jason Miller, who has been able to cover a little bit after falling back in the early stages himself, but off in the distance and with none of his competition in sight, Wilson Timothy takes the white flag, running right in the tire tracks of Brianna Princehorn and attempting to avoid any inherent risk in running side by side with another truck. 
he has proven himself to be the fastest driver of the day, and he is going to be rewarded with his first victory of the 2021 season. Rounding the final corner, Wilson Timothy wins at the Toledo Speedway. This is the first victory of the season as well for the Binford Racing Team. Juan Cortez brings the truck home in second place for the best finish of his Voltzon Super Trucks career. It was an excellent day for Cortez in the Midwest Motors truck. Jason Miller got around Caitlin Holt on the final lap of the race to claim the final spot on the podium, that's his second of the season, and Holt finishes in fourth for the second race in a row. Danella Jacobson holds onto the fifth spot after hitting the wall late in the going, backing up her maiden win with another top five finish. Robert Embry made up a lot of ground to achieve a sixth place finish, and that is the first top ten of his young career. Alex Robbins is in seventh with the second eighth place finish in a row for Alex DeFranco, the teammate to Juan Cortez. Amberly Weiss has a quiet day herself, but brings the truck home in ninth, and Danny Vigo may not have been able to achieve his fourth podium in a row and continue the streak that began at the end of 2019, but he still brings the truck home, rounding out the top 10. 